Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi, and welcome to the Thursday Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is a report that goes over the immediate conditions for the weekend and kind of looks off in the future of fly fishing in Texas, you know, as spring develops and everything else. Uh, you can find a whole lot of supplemental information at www.texasflycaster.com. But for now, let me just get to the report. This weekend looks like a, a unique weekend in the, in the month of January because we're going to have bluebird conditions on the Texas Gulf Coast, and those conditions are going to allow for some great fishing. Uh, as I've told you in the past week, there I've heard reports of plenty of bait in the bait stands, and, and that usually means there's plenty of bait to be be had in near shore and that also means that there should be fish chasing that bait so it should be very interesting we haven't had what I would consider a long cold snap this year and that includes North Texas and the whole state so things really haven't cooled off to the point where it's just completely dead except mostly here in North Texas unless you're deep fishing with a full sinking line um, you're not gonna have much much luck here on, on the lakes but if you're interested in going after rainbow trout in Blue River or Broken Bow Beaver's Bend, Oklahoma, that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Dallas Fort Worth. And you can get there really quickly. And the weather we're having this morning, that's the reason I'm here instead of out in the fly bar broadcasting. It's it's a light mist that's just floating through the air and the temperature is just above freezing. So once you cross over in Oklahoma, you gotta be careful when you're driving, but otherwise there should be some really good fishing. Anytime you got overcast and, and conditions like this, uh, especially Blue River just turns on magnificently. Um, that is a place that is stocked seasonally, the Blue River, and it won't be long until that won't be stocked anymore. It's the end of February, beginning of March, when they stop stocking those places. If you look back through the articles on the Texas Flycaster website, you'll also know that they've had trouble with the, getting their supplies of fish for stocking fish in Oklahoma. Read all about that and uh, hopefully they've got that problem solved and maybe they'll uh, have more fish. Here in Texas, back to Texas though, as the weather continues to be mild, kind of mellow for a, a Texas winter, you know, we, we suffer here in North Texas from the extremes because the cold fronts always seem to make it through North Texas. Uh, it's probably 32 degrees today and for Saturday those bluebird conditions I was talking about earlier, it's going to be 80 degrees. So that's a big swing in temperature. It'll affect everything that's going on um, slightly because nothing lasts very long. It'll probably drop down to these temperatures by next weekend. But what we're looking at is a fantastic weekend to get out and at least, you know, shake off some of the cold, and some of the wet, and, and have a good day outdoors on Saturday and Sunday. As for me, I'll be, I'll be working on the Airstream trailer as usual. That'll be our home base very, very soon. I'd say by April, May at the latest. We'll be broadcasting from and living in on the extended periods uh, the Airstream trailer. So that'll be interesting and fun. And of course, I'll bring you along for that adventure. If you ever want to see any more about the Airstream, which I do a lot of work on that too, and a lot of, a lot of information disseminated on that, that's at airstreamdiary.com. I don't know if you're interested or not, but anyway, that's where that's all about. Uh, so anyway, I have a couple of videos that came out. Or I got one that came out yesterday on Water Wednesday you might want to look at. It's about the water levels here on the lake I guide on, which is Lake Ray Roberts here in North Texas. Kind of my own little soapbox I jump on on that video about what I think about how water... Uh, is handled in the state of Texas. Sorry about that if you don't like people jumping up on soapboxes. And then um, I've got a tip that's in the can, which means if it's in the can, it means it's already recorded and ready to go. But I'm going to let that one mellow a little bit and probably drop that tip out on Monday. It's about how to take care of your Sims leather wading boots. I always thought that the G3 Guide boot is a great boot. Mine have been great. And uh, the only problem is the darn things are made of leather and you know leather and water usually don't mix but these have done really well and so I go through on this extended tip on how to re-moisturize that leather and make those boots last a lot longer so tune in for that I'll run that on Monday along with the, the, the Monday morning sidewalk it'll come out right after that and we'll just double up on Monday 
my tip I, I sometimes I have tips at the end of these these shows and sometimes I don't I thought of one today it's a really simple tip and what it is is I've seen fly fishers with a lot of experience that I fish with and some that have never fished before do the same thing and what that is uh, it's kind of you know this is just a little micro tip that, that will help you with keeping your fly rod together and what we do when we when we put our fly rods together a lot of guys will just take those ferrules because they're not metal ferrules anymore on most of these rods they'll just take those ferrules and I've seen them just just take it like this and kind of just you know stick it together like like that and they don't do anything but just press it on real hard well the key to making uh, a better seating of these these rod pieces because we've got four of them usually on nine foot rod they're usually in fours now so we can travel with them the key to this is treating it like a nut and a bolt so what you do is you take it and you turn it on a certain way whichever direction feels good to you clockwise counterclockwise and then tighten it in like that and then when you loosen it loosen it out just the same way you'd be turning a screw on a on a uh, bolt and the reason we do this and the reason it works so well is because what happens is over time there's microscopic scratches that get into in here and these microscopic scratches um, create like threads on, on a bolt and so if you think of this as a nut and a bolt what happens is as, as those start to embed into that glass and that surface they become a little deeper and a little deeper and then finally they hold just almost like a threaded nut and bolt so that's your tip for today try that and, and start out when you first get your rod doing that and it'll it'll develop really quickly into a rod that won't fly apart when you're fishing somewhere there are some that are notorious for coming apart um, one of those is, is some of the sage rods but otherwise it works really well and do that on every piece all 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 the other section as well and you'll be uh, surprised at how well these rods stay together thanks for watching have a great weekend this should be a really good weekend to get to the coast and do some saltwater fishing I, if you can any way you can get there saturday sunday should be really great days and i fully expect to see a lot of photographs from there and also check the website for some facebook pages that i've bookmarked so that if you want to look straight at what guys are doing they're they're posting everything to facebook so that's where you're going to find it and if you like what you see and enjoy the show feel free to subscribe to the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. I think it's a pretty good information channel and I love to have you guys come and watch. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it and we'll be glad to get it on the report.